Hi guys, it's Mrs. Trosvik down in house 6B. We're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. So yesterday we did 3.7. Today we are on 3.8. We are still multiplying decimals, but this time we're multiplying decimals by decimals. It's a little bit more complex. Um, we are on page 56. You may have your calculators today if you wish. Um, if you really need them, or your multiplication charts. Multiplication charts are key to finding those missing answers. So if you have your multiplication charts, awesome, pull them out. Um, okay, I am going to use traditional algorithm. This is going to look really crazy to some of you who have never seen traditional algorithm of multi-digit numbers by multi-digit numbers. So bear with me, okay? Number one, Reminder, if you use a different method like lattice or partial products, as long as you remember how to do a multi-digit number by multi-digit mu number multiplication, you can use whatever method you want. Just pause the video until you get to the answer and then come back and then match your answer with mine, okay? And the key is going to be the decimal. So this time, if we have two decimals, a decimal in each of our numbers, there's going to be an additional little trick to it. So... Right now, I'm going to actually leave the decimals completely out of our problem, and we're just going to go with the numbers. So number one, I'm going to write as 152 times 35, and there's a reason for that, okay? All right, traditional algorithm. We can only go one number at a time in the second number. So I'm going to start with number five, and I'm going to multiply it by each piece once at a time, okay? It's going to look kind of crazy at first. So 5 times 2, I know is 10. My 0 goes down below, and I carry a plus 1 above the 5, my next number, because that's the next number I'm going to multiply by. Then that gives me 5 times 5, which gives me 25 plus that 1 that I already carried above. So 25 plus 1 gives me 26. That puts a 6 down below and a plus 2 above the next number. Then I have 5 times 1, which equals 5, plus 2, which equals 7. So now I have 760. All right, when I was a kid, I was taught to really just X out of that number because we used it. We used that number, and once I X it out, I have to put an X inside a 0 down here below because I'm going to create another number that I'm going to add. So if I use this guy, I'm going to replace it with a zero down below. Now, that means I can go on and just focus on my three. So this time I'm going to take three, and I have to start in the same order. So the first one I'm going to multiply by, let's see if I can get some of this work out of the way so we don't get confused by it. The first number I'm going to multiply by is my two. So my first step would be 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. I'm going to put that right here under the 6. So make sure that you're lining up all of your numbers if you're using the traditional algorithm. Then I'm going to go 3 times 5, which is 15. My 5 goes down below, and I carry the 1, and I add it above the next number that I'm multiplying by. Okay, now 3 times 1 gets me 3. 3 plus 1 gives me 4, and I'm going to put the 4 there. So see how I lined everything up? Once I use that number, I put the 0 in the 1's place, so my first answer of 3 times 2 has to go into my 10's place. And there's a reason for it, okay? So 0 plus 0 equals 0. 6 plus 6 equals 12. I have to carry my 1. 1 plus 7 plus 5 equals 13. I put 3 down below, I carry my 1, 1 plus 4 equals 5. Now, I've gotten to my final answer. So for those of you who did lattice, those of you who did um, a different method, make sure that your answer matches mine. 5, five 3, 2, 0. We haven't gone back and put the decimals in yet. If you have this answer, then you know that you did whatever method correctly to multiply a multi-digit number by a multi-digit number. Okay, now... I'm going to go back to the problem. If I go back to the problem, I'm going to count again how many how many numbers come after my decimals. So 15.2, I had one number come after that decimal. And then 3.5, I have one number that comes after that decimal. So again, kind of like 
just one number with a decimal, we're still adding however many numbers come after our decimals. So I had one here and I had one here, which is a total of two. So once I get those two bubbles, those two numbers, I'm going to know that I have to go two hops to place my decimal. So that would leave me with an answer of 53.20. And if you don't believe me, we're going to pull out our handy dandy calculator. And I'm going to show you, of course, that I'm right. So 15, whoops, 15.2 times 3.5, and we are left with 53.2. So 53.20 is the same as 53.2, so the method does work. So just hang on to those decimal points and however many numbers come after the decimal till the end, and then go back and just move your decimal and place it in there by ever, however many numbers come after your decimal place is total. Okay, now number two is gonna be a little trickier, so you're gonna see it a little bit different in number two. Number two, we have 9.54 times, oh, and I'm just going to leave my decimal off, so I'm going to think of it as 954 times 53. Okay, now, I'm going to start with my ones place in my second number, my three. So my three is the number I'm going to multiply by each digit on the top in my first number. So the first number, four times three or three times four, gives me 12. I put my two down below and I put the one up above the next number I'm multiplying by. So 12, one goes up above, two goes down below. Next, I take three times five and I get 15 and I'm going to add it to that one that I carried above. So 15 plus one gives me 16. So the six this time goes down below and I'm gonna carry the one, so 16. One goes up above, six goes down below. Now, last step for my first digit, three times nine equals 27. That leaves me with 27 plus one, and I get 28. Now that I'm done with all of those guys, all my digits on the top by my first digit in the bottom number, now I can erase that work so it doesn't get so complicated. And I'm going to cross off my three. And remember, once we're done with the three, we have to put a zero in the ones place down below. That shows that we are done with our ones multiplication. It also proves that I'm starting in a tens place for my next multiplication. So that's why it makes sense to get rid of it, but also put a zero in the ones place because we no longer have any more ones to multiply by. Okay, so that leaves me with my next step. And that would be multiplying my second digit, the five, which is in the tens place, by each of the digits up above, each number up above. We always have to start in the ones place. So I'm gonna start with five times four. Five times four is 20. I'm gonna put a zero down below and the two up above the five, the next digit. So 20, the zero goes down below, the two goes up above. Now five times five, five times five equals 25, and I'm gonna add it to the two that I carried above from the last number. So 25 plus two equals 27, seven goes down below, and I'm gonna put a plus two up above. So now I have the 27, carry my two, seven down below. Now, last step, I have my last digit, five times nine equals 45. 45 plus two equals 47, seven and four. The key is to keep all of your numbers lined up nicely. They should be in columns if you're doing the traditional algorithm. Otherwise, you will make mistakes when you go back and add the two numbers together. Always. That's where all of the mistakes are typically made in multi-digit multiplication. So if you're not lining them up correctly, you're always going to make a mistake in adding. Okay, so 2 plus 0, 2. 6 plus 0, 6. 8 plus 7, 15. 5 goes down below, a plus 1 in the next column. 1 plus 2 plus 7 is 10. 0 goes down below, plus 1 up above. 1 plus 4 is 5. Now, I have this very long number, 50562. Now I have to go back and figure out where in the world is my decimal going to go. 
in order to figure that out, I have to go back and count how many numbers come after my decimal in each of my numbers I'm multiplying by. So the first one, I have one, two, and the second one I have one. So I have a total of three numbers after my total decimals that I'm multiplying by. So if I have three numbers after my decimals, that's how many hops we have to make in our answer. So I'm gonna start over here on the right side and go back one, two, three hops, three place values. And that's where my decimal will stay. So my answer will be 50.562 or 50 and 562 thousandths. That's a pretty hard problem. And typically in the real world, if it gets to be this complex of a problem, you're probably gonna use your handy dandy calculator to solve it. Okay, so we're gonna just check our work really quick just to make sure that Mrs. Trosvik has not made any mistakes. That left us with the 50562. Let's make sure that our decimal 9.54 times 5.3 and our decimal is correct. So 50.562, we did it correctly. All right, now, I forgot to put my answers in here. Make sure you're writing your answers down on your worksheet and showing your work on your scratch paper. Therefore, when you take your picture, you have both of them in the picture. We can see your answers and your work put together, okay? All right, number three, I'll do one more with you. Number three, we have 572, because I'm gonna ignore my decimals, times 63. So 572 times 63. I'm gonna go a little faster this time, okay? Three. I'm gonna take it times two, that gives me six. Three times seven is 21. I'm gonna put my one down below and carry my two up above, 21. Three times five gives me 15. 15 plus two gives me 17. I put my 17 down below because that was my last digit to multiply by. I'm gonna erase that work. So I don't get confused when I move on to my next digit. And I can't move on to my next digit until I show that I'm done with the first digit. And I replace it with a zero down below in my next number to add. Okay, now I can go to the six. Uh, sorry guys, I have to pick the right color. Six, six times two gives me 12. It leaves me with a two down below and a plus one up above. Six times seven gives me 42. 42 plus one. I have to add it to the one that I carried above. 42 plus one equals 43. Three goes down below plus four up above the next number. Six times five equals 30. 30 plus 4 equals 34. Make sure I line up my numbers so I don't make any mistakes in adding because that's where all of the mistakes are always made. So if I have my columns nicely lined up, I will not make a mistake. I should not make a mistake, I should say, because I still make mistakes. 6 plus 0 equals 6. 1 plus 2 equals 3. 7 plus 3 equals 10. I put my 0 down below and I carry my 1. 1 plus 1 plus 4 gives me 6. 3 plus nothing gives me 3. It's a very long number. Now I have to figure out how I place my decimal. So if I go back to my problem, I have 1, 2, 3 numbers after my decimal. So I know I have to move my decimal 3 hops back to get my answer. And my answer will be 36.036. Let's check my work. 5.72 times 6.3 equals 36.036. All right, make sure your answer gets put onto your sheet and make sure that all your work is done. Okay, so now it is your turn to show your work. Remember, if you used another method, that's totally fine as long as you're doing it correctly and you're getting to the correct answer. And make sure you go back and input your decimal, okay? So if you're using lattice, partial products, whatever other method you learned in Bridges, I know there's a million gazillion that you learned, 
Make sure that you're getting to the answer and putting those decimal places back by just counting how many numbers come after your decimals. All right, I'm going to be really nice on you guys, and I'm only going to have you finish four through eight. So you're going to do four through eight. When you are done, you can submit it on Edge Elastic. Make sure you're showing all of your work and your answers in your picture, okay? You can cross off nine through 16. Have a good day, guys. Thanks for coming. Good luck. Let your teacher know if you need help.